What up everybody, Mark Fusco here for Behind the Green Screen. This is the channel where I cover every aspect of how I create my Wine World TV show. If you like what I'm doing here, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and you know what? Tell your friends to do the same. That is what really helps the channel grow. So you got your fancy camera that can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, and you're ready to go. But should you record in all that 4K 2160p goodness? Won't 1080p look just as good? Especially since it's just gonna be on YouTube anyway. Probably. What about file size and how easy is it to edit? Now, I watch a lot of creators on YouTube. I've seen both 4K and 1080p. Honestly, most of their videos are 1080p on YouTube. But what did they record it in? Let's see if that matters or not. First, what do I shoot in? And what resolution do I upload? Now, back in 2009, when I started my wine channel, I shot in 720p because, well, basically that's all I had. I moved up to 1080p and then shifted back to 1080i with the camcorder I used for several years. Eventually, the iPhone came in at 1080p and then when I went full-time, I went with the iPhone 11 Pro and went 4K all the way, baby. So, my YouTube videos are now in 4K? No. And they look amazing, I mean, considering. I've seen Tony Northrup talk about how they switched from uploading 4K to 1080p among other changes, and not a single person mentioned the change. And he does photography and videography videos. So if anyone should be doing it as far as 4K, it should be them. I'm not saying you shouldn't upload 4K video, just that the market or need for it actually is really small. You need to figure out what your goal is. Unless you're going to uh, unless you're going for shooting cinematic stuff here on, on the tube, 1080p upload is fine. Plus, if you are going for that cinematic look, there are way more people out there uh, than me that can teach you that. I know the basics, but I don't have any plans to go into that part of stuff. Now, why? Well, because I don't do that. And this channel is based on teaching what I do, not what others do. With all this talk about 4K versus 1080p, realize that this all depends on the camera you're using. Not all 4K or even 1080p are created equal. Sensor size, megapixels, bit rates, etc. matter, but basically any name brand device that can shoot video will suffice for YouTube. So am I saying to not shoot in 4K? No, not at all. I've seen other people talk about how shooting in 4K is a waste if you're not uploading in 4K. For me, it's worth it, for really one reason alone, among others, this. I can zoom in for effect and have relatively no loss in quality, within reason of course. I can't zoom in 400% or 600% and expect perfectly sharp video. Okay, I'm sure there's someone out there saying that I should be able to do a 400% zoom with no quality loss because it's 4K. Yeah, that 4K is based upon four times 720, not 1080. 4K is only double 1080p, hence why it's called 2160p. I use the zoom technique as a way to help break up the video so that I'm not like static. I do other things to help with the monotony of a talking head, but having that ability to zoom 200% and more with some quality loss has been useful in my reviews. It effectively adds an an additional camera angle or two to a video. Now, one of the nice things about that is if I mess up accidentally and like say frame myself wrong, like not having the camera close enough or not angled just right to not see the edges of my, well, blue screen, um, I can zoom in with zero loss. Typically, I only have to do like 105% zoom, but even in my 1080p days, that kind of zoom wasn't really that bad when I had to do it. Another thing about shooting in 4K and then downscaling to 1080p is that you end up with a better picture than if you shot in just 1080p in most cases. Now why? Well, bitrate. Now this may depend on the camera you use or smartphone camera app you're using, but in general, cameras shoot at a higher bitrate in 4K than they do in 1080p. But there are limitations to this. Now, in this example, I shot two different videos. I did one in 1080p and then one in 4K. In this example, I shot two different videos, one in 1080p and one in 4K. 
Other than a slight difference in shutter speed and ISO, the videos are effectively identical. I try to make it as close as possible with exposure and then try to match with color correction. Depending how long I'm showing this video, you will see that one of the videos, there is some differences, even though I set everything to be close, one of the videos has changed in its color, in its, uh, color temperature and all that. I won't tell you which one it is, but effectively they're both the same. So now, after all that said, can you tell the difference? Do you know which one is which? Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Can you tell me which one is 4K versus 1080p? I can say, you know, dude, it was super fun to sit there uber bored for one minute at a time. All right, so the 4K video has a bit rate of 79.6 megabits per second. Now this is what Filmic Pro uh, Extreme yielded at 4K for this video, for the length of the video. And your results may vary. I, I know mine do, depending on the length of the video, it might be higher or lower. The 1080p video has a bit rate of 29.6 megabits per second. Also, what Filmic Pro uh, Extreme shot at for that resolution for that time frame. For additional comparison, I checked out several prior episodes of WWTV and Behind the Green Screen all shot at 4K30 using the Filmic Extreme setting, or Filmic, Filmic Pro Extreme setting. They all ended up somewhere between 95 and 125 megabits per second. Not sure really why there's such a large discrepancy in my short test videos and these much longer videos. All right, look closely as I show you these clips. In theory, the 4K downscaled should look better, but will it? Are you able to see an actual difference in the clips? Okay, so here are the results. Now, the first set of videos I showed you, clip number one is 1080p, as in it was shot in 1080p. And number two is 4K that was downscaled to 1080p. Then I swapped them. So clip number three is the 4K downscaled uh, to 1080p, and clip number four is straight 1080p. Then for the third set, I kept them the same as the last pair. So clip number five is 4K downscaled and number six is straight 1080p. For the side-by-side -side comparison, for the first showing or first pass, on the left side is 4K downscaled and on the right side is 1080p. All I did was crop with no magnification. The second pass, I messed around a bit. Both sides are actually the same resolution. 1080p, no crop or no zoom, but I cropped it so everything's centered. The third pass, I put 1080p on the left and 4K downscaled on the right. Again, just no crop. I cropped it so that you can, I'm um, centered, but there was no zoom or anything like that. Now, since I don't know how you're watching this, you may or may not notice a difference, but let's do the side by side while actually zooming in. 1080p on the left and 4K downscaled on the right. First, let's do a 200% zoom. The 1080p should have started to break down a little bit. Now, 400%. The 1080p should be pretty unusable unless you are going for that effect. But the 4K is usable. It's not perfect, but it's usable if you need to. Now, while researching for this episode, I ran across an article online from The Beat. The author did actually just this. Now, what he did was upload similar tests and then did some pixel peeping on YouTube. His conclusion was that YouTube's compression effectively erased any advantage of recording in 4K and then downscaling 1080p for upload. I've linked, it, I've linked to that article in the description. The article was from February of 2018. Now, I suspect that either his test had some kind of flaw or YouTube's compression got better. The reason I say that, from what I saw on my screens, shooting in 4K and then downscaling to 1080p 
actually does yield a better result than doing everything in 1080p. Not that the 1080p looks bad, it just 4K downscaled looks better. For my tests of uploading 4K and a 4K downscale of 1080p and a normally shot 1080p video, the 4K definitely looked the best. It had the best definition and sharpness. The 1080p on its own looked like I had used a smoothing effect on my face. The 4K downscale to 1080p was somewhere in the middle with it being closer to 4K video quality than 1080p quality. It still was 1080p, but it also was a better video overall. I also downloaded the videos to see the difference and got the same results. Depending on the type of content you're making, this may not be a big issue and you actually may not really see a difference. Now for me, it's worth the time, effort and storage to shoot in 4K. I get to take advantage of better digital zoom. And this isn't just for me, but when I do interviews, I can achieve better composition with virtual camera angles by shooting in 4K and then cropping uh, and zooming as necessary. I also get a better video image overall. Now, but remember, this is YouTube and many people are watching on a mobile device of some sort that may or may not be able to display 4K content anyway. So give them the best 1080p you can or the best looking 1080p you can. The downside to all of this for the purpose of YouTube is that 4K files are at least two and a half to 2.75 times the bitrate and size, sometimes more. This needs to be taken into consideration. Now I can tell you that I have an external four terabyte hard drive for literally all of my stuff. It has this channel's audio and video plus WWTV's audio and video. All my picks for the shows, logos, backgrounds, etc. they don't really don't take up that much, but they're all, they're there. It actually also has all of my music and movies. Out of four terabytes available, I'm currently using 3.1 terabytes. My music is 320 gigabytes and movies are 30 gigabytes. I, I don't really have a lot of movies in the movie file. A lot of my iTunes movies or movies I bought through the iTunes store um, are, should be part of that 320 gigabytes. So 2.7 terabytes for my entire production, all of it, WWTV and behind the green screens. By the way, just so you know, the um, overarching umbrella is MVF Productions because, well, that's my initials. Anyway, production of close to 12 years. That's really not bad, huh? Well, it's all about file management. It might be sacrilegious, but I only keep my raw unedited audio and video files for a short amount of time. Now that's, that's a relative term. You know how many times I've needed the original audio and video files from eight years ago? Never, never, but that's me. So sure, I've done a, a, a clip show or a best of show and my intro for WTV for the WW, I'm sorry, my intro for 1337 Wine TV for the longest time was clips that I had over the years. But I used the final cuts for all that. I didn't like remaster. I didn't like, you know, import all the original stuff. And honestly, it's YouTube. It's not a major motion picture or a TV show that might need to be archived. So yeah, I'm using four terabytes. I can tell you that the Leet Wines final cuts take up about 537 megabytes. That's actually not a lot. You'll see I have some folders with some original files still from 2019 and last year. These will eventually be deleted. I had plans for them, but my plans have changed. For WWTV, the rebranded version of Leet Wine, I have quite a bit of original files. Now, some of that is so that I have some examples to use for this show. Some challenges I had that will be future topics. But once I don't need them anymore, I'll delete them. But at some point, I'm gonna have to buy another external hard drive, probably another four or maybe even five terabyte drive, and then split off, say, older files, maybe music and movies to one drive and then keep the second drive for like current production. And I'll probably retain more original files. I don't know, I haven't decided that yet. What also helps is that I added an extra eight terabytes to my time machine, which is actually just all I did was take an old eight terabyte drive, add it to my current eight terabyte drive, and you you um, combine them as like a RAID zero. And it's, it's, a, it's a time machine backup. So you're not looking for the advantages of RAID as far as, um, duplication duplicate copies you're i'm just making it one big hard drive it works really well i've been doing it for like a month now 
The other issue to contend with is editing with 4K footage. Now, that's actually best left for another episode and talking about handling it, but the quick and dirty about this is that I just use proxy files for editing purposes, plus other settings in Final Cut. And my iMac is actually a late 2015 model. Now, I bought it in 2017, but that's not important. It's powerful enough to edit relatively smoothly using proxies. The only issue I have, really, the only issue I have with that computer is because it's a uh, slower CPU than what's currently available, it just takes longer to render out the final product. But editing is fine. Like, it doesn't really take a super long time to edit things, but I can tell you that noise reduction, if you use any kind of noise reduction, it literally can take a full day, 24 hours of rendering or, or exporting a say 10 to 20 minute, uh, maybe like a 20 minute file. It takes a really long time. Actually, it might take for an hour of show. I think it takes like a good 24 hours for that to export. So noise reduction, not so much on a slower computer. So really it's just up to you whether you want to shoot in 4K or not. You benefit from higher quality video, but need storage and a halfway decent computer to edit on. For me, it's worth it in order to have the best quality to start with. All right, so question of the day. Are you shooting in 1080p or 4K? Are you going to switch? And if you are shooting in 4K, are you downscaling 1080p? Let me know in the comments. And with that, it's gonna do it for today's show. If you're getting value from what I'm doing here, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.